So we're going to continue the Tenable series where we're mediating the vulnerabilities on TI Desktop 4. And so I want to start off here. First, I just want to thank our sponsor, Cybertar.ai. They are the persons or the company <laughs> that I work for. They're the persons. But that's who I work for. And they actually provided me with the Tenable Tenant that I'm using for this vulnerability management um, series that I'm doing. So do me a favor. Go to Savatar.ai and you can see C-Y-V-A-T-A-R.ai. Sign up for a free trial. Even if you like, even if you don't like, like you're not a big company, I think it's worth going and signing up and checking out our platform because we're doing truly automated security. And what you see me teaching on the channel is what we're doing for companies. We're actually remediating vulnerabilities. Contrary to popular belief, most companies do not remediate vulnerabilities. Okay. That's just facts. Okay. They patch it, but when it comes to vulnerabilities, you see what it requires on my channel to actually remediate vulnerabilities. And I can tell you, most companies ain't doing it. They just putting the patches out there. They're scanning you and they're telling you you're vulnerable and good luck to you. Okay. <clears throat> so that being the case, let's go ahead and jump into this. Now on TI desktop four, we went from having criticals. We've remediated all the critical vulnerabilities at this point. We're now down to the high. And if you can see, so one of the things I really want to emphasize when doing vulnerability remediation, and let's zoom in. Y'all know, know the format right now. So when we're doing vulnerability remediation, your job as the professional, okay, because I want you to put yourself in the mind, you're working and doing this for another company, is to assess this. And so for those of you in chat, if you can get the answer here right quick, I'll respond to it. But for those of you in chat, what we're doing is, I want you to look at this. And we show five vulnerabilities. But what you need to really see is the fact that it's not necessarily five vulnerabilities. It's actually two actions that, need, that are needed to remediate five vulnerabilities. <coughs> Forgive me for the coughing. Still trying to finish, clear off from COVID. But here's the deal. So Zoom, we've got five, four vulnerabilities for Zoom. So the action that mitigates these four Zoom vulnerabilities is to update Zoom on my machine to the latest version of Zoom, low-hanging fruit. By doing so, and if I upgrade it to version 5.17.0, then that will allow me to eliminate, and let's go here, that will allow me to eliminate four vulnerabilities, okay? So when people are looking at your vulnerabilities for your company, you need to be able to assess it and kind of say, okay, well, even though we have a thousand vulnerabilities, we have only maybe a hundred devices and we may only have like 15 actions that we need to perform, or we can write one script that will take out all of these vulnerabilities. Okay. So I think that's how I need for y'all to kind of look at this as we're going through it. So anyway, so our mission for today is, and I'm going to zoom back out now is we want to do it. And I'm also trying to get you to use PowerShell and use scripting because most likely you're not going to be on every machine unless you're in a very small company. So we need to know what the current version of Zoom. So let's go to Zoom download, okay? And we prepped and we did the prep for this in the meeting the other day. So if I go to Zoom download, let's see. Oh, right, let's go to the first one. I like the first one. It looks better. This is a support link. So here's the one, zoom.us slash download. So what I've identified, and this is part of the process of vulnerability remediation, okay? All right, let's zoom in a little bit. So what I've identified here is that Zoom, the latest version is 5.17.11. Tenable says I only need to be 5.17.0, okay? So what is going to be our action for Zoom? Well, our action is going to be to update to 5.17.11 because a new version is going to come out. And then the reality is hopefully in the future, it will release new versions of Zoom. Now, I'm going to show you something here in PowerShell. So basically, let's get PowerShell going now and let's start playing around. So... I want to understand Zoom. And you know what I've done in the previous videos is I spent some time in the registry, right? And so there's several actions. There's a there's a possible update command that we can run for Zoom. We can actually use use PowerShell, a dirty trick, just to open Zoom on the user's machine. And when Zoom open, typically it does an update. So I want to show you that because that's a viable option because we can just use a PowerShell command to open Zoom. But before I get into that, I actually want to go to, I want to go to HKey Local Machine Software and Microsoft Windows current run. Okay, current version run. Let me get this on the screen here. The reason I want to go, un, I'm sorry, current version uninstall is where I want to go. The reason I want to go here is because I want to understand all the details about Zoom. And actually, I think, it's, yeah, let's try it. So let's go Microsoft. 
I'll, I'll tell you what I want to do in just a second. If this doesn't give you what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for is the modify. I'm looking for the uninstall string. I'm looking for the switches related to Zoom. And typically, you can find that in the registry of the program. Okay. So we're at Microsoft Windows current version and then uninstall. Okay. So not enough at the uninstall folder. I'm going to expand that. And I'm just going to do an edit and find, and I'm going to look for Zoom. I mean, you know, Zoom is, you know, it's, it's not common enough that I should be able to just filter through a few of these. So I'm going to press F3 to go to the next one. And I'll tell you when I see what I'm looking for, because it may not be here. All right. So it looks like we're out of that folder at this point. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't get what I was looking for there. Okay. And so now I'm just kind of deep off in the registry. I'm in the classes, I'm in interfaces. So that didn't yield what I was looking for, which is the uninstall string for Zoom, okay? I do know a trick though with Zoom. I think it's Zoom, oh, I do remember this. Okay, so I'm gonna rely on some past knowledge here because I think what I recall is you can actually run and reference the executable and do a slash uninstall and silent, but here, Let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's let let's let Google work for us. So Zoom, silent. You see, silent uninstall. See, the thing is, you got to get. For me, the biggest thing is being able to feed the search engine or the AI exactly what you need. All right, uninstalling and reinstalling the Zoom application. Okay, so this looks like this is going to be promising, but we want the uninstall string to do it silently. Is it going to give it to us? All right, I don't see it here. And if y'all in chat see this, so this is this is not what I'm looking for. All right. So let's see, uninstall with a clean. No, nah, we don't want to use some tool. Finally, uninstall specify software. Uninstall it. Is this John Hopkins University? I don't want this. So I didn't really get what I want. Uh, oh, let's just do Zoom uninstall. And let's just see a command line. Oh, let's do this. Zoom uninstall command line. Cause see, if I get the regular command line, I can then take that and I can pivot and I can find other stuff that I'm looking for. All right, so it looks like that's taking us back to this page. Um, I think we can find this in support. You can also, oh, okay. So download and run the Zoom, the clean Zoom. Okay, so that's an option to remove Zoom completely. So let's go to the clean zoom. All right, so that's just a direct link to the download. And so that's good. That comes as a zip. So basically in PowerShell, if you want to do this with a script, we got to do the download command. Let's see, add command or PowerShell to the end of the search. All right, we, we can try that, Archer. I, I did I did think about that, but I knew that was going to take me off of the official channel. So I will, I'll pivot back to that in just a little bit. Um, this zoom clean tool does a good job. I'm going to go for uh i think what i'll do here let's going to take it and i'm going to do what i would probably do in most cases is let's find out where zoom is first of all on the machine is it in c colon program files is it in c colon users you know is it profile specifically all right so zoom is not there okay all right Asterisk 86 asterisk. That's my little syntax. I do to get the program files 80 program files 86 folder. I'm going to do a directory right there. Okay. Now you see what I see there. I don't see zoom in either one of those. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go back to tenable because tenable typically in a plugin output. Let's see what they got here. So solution is to uninstall zoom. Let's go to the details. All right. So this is what I feared. So this zoom is actually app is profile specific. Okay. So you can see this it's profile specific. So that means for every user, if you're look, looking at this from an enterprise standpoint, then that means you're going to have to write a script that's going to iterate through every user on the machine and uninstall zoom or do an update command or something like that. Definitely a pain. I hate that they, I hate when programs do pro, like profile specific stuff. All right, let's change to this folder. All right, and let's do a directory. And 
I know that within one of these folders, I think specifically the bin, maybe this installer is it. Let's do it. Let's do a dir asher.exe because I want to look at the executables in the folder. Okay. What I know from the job <laughs> is that that one of these files in here, I can actually run it with switches and uninstall Zoom completely. Okay. And once I know what the what the syntax is, guess what? I can run this on a thousand machines. Sleepy Ninja, what's up? Microsoft, Microsoft Teams. I do. I actually have a script for Microsoft Teams. It was one of the first ones that I wrote that iterates through profiles for that very reason. My part. See, that's somebody who knows what's up. Sleepy Ninja on uh, Twitch. I wish I could put the chat here. Can I? Oh, I can. I can just drag the track chat over there so y'all can see it. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's see if I can get that on on it. Make the, the, the stream a little bit more interesting so y'all can see everything that I'm seeing, okay? All right, there we go. How about that? There we go. So, and that, dang it. Can I put it on top? Is there a way to say always on top? I guess not. Okay, well, that's all right. It'll get covered up as soon as I click on it, but we'll, we'll bring it back so y'all can at least see the chat and I can read it. So, but anyway, uh, what we're gonna do is let's start off with this. Okay, so if you wanna run something in PowerShell, you want to do a dot backslash command, okay? So I can say dot backslash zoom dot exe. That's, that ain't zoom. Forward slash uh, uninstall. And let's see what that does. Okay. That's promising that it launched zoom. Okay. Let's see. Are questions answering over? Sorry, I guess I missed the opportunity for my last question. No, no, I'm actually answering questions as we do it. I actually put it on the stream. So you're actually part of the recording that's going to go live. So, all right, that's interesting because when I did that, at least open Zoom. Let's do uninstall slash silent. And then I'm just going to do a DIR command. Okay, so what does that tell me? That tells me that I didn't get my syntax correct, right? Because it opened Zoom and it didn't do silent. Okay. So now I, I'm potentially curious whether this uninstall command is work. But let's let's go back to our other one. We have some other files in here. So let's do a dir astro.exe. And when I do that, I'm gonna look at also I had I thought I saw something that said installer. Installer.exe. So let's dot backslash installer slash uninstall. And see how that works. Ooh, 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 yes. All right. That's what I'm looking for. Let's cancel it. Stop it. Okay. That's the money shot right there. So now, once again, I can write a program that iterates through through all the profiles and I can do the uninstall. So now that I know the uninstall command, let's try solid. Ooh, didn't like that. All right. Interesting. Uninstall slash solid. No liking. Hmm. I'm on the right path now. So let's format this and uh, let's let's format this in uh, other PowerShell syntax. So you can do a dot backslash. I like dot backslash because it allows you to run the commands and get like actual like feedback, like as if you were running on a machine. So even if I was running this remotely, if I navigated to the folder and did a dot backslash, I got I get more like verbose output from just like I'm running it locally, even if I'm remote. You could also format this and say start tag process grow C E S S. And then I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this entire path here. And once again, if I was writing the program, I would iterate through this. Okay, C colon program bin zoom installer.exe. Okay. And gonna put double quotes at the end of that. And then I'm gonna do a uh, tack argument tack is the same as minus for if you're not used to hearing that argument I got fussed at by some cyber security folks when I was starting the stream it's like nobody nobody that's uh in cyber security or a red team says a minus is tack is tack and that person traumatized me so I'll, I'll say tack so that I can fit in with everybody else now so a r g u m e n t l s t it was uninstall slash silent okay let's do that System cannot find a specified file. All right, so let's make sure that my, oh, 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 I know what I just, <laughs> oh man, this tutorial is over. Well, let me show you why. Um, 
Guess what? Directory command is not working for this folder. Guess what? Folder is gone. Zoom folder is there, but Zoom is uninstalled. Okay. So what does this boil down to? All right. So the thing is, we were able to do it. And unfortunately, I don't know, like I do remember from memory, I think it's uninstall slash silent. I think that's the actual string that we want to use to uninstall Zoom silently. And so basically we have to do a for loop. We have to pull the current username and then we'll basically build this file path over and over for every user on the computer, user one, user two, user three, uh, app data, roaming, Zoom, Ben, is the folder there? Yes. Dot backslash installer.exe space forward slash uninstall space silent. We'll do that over and over for every user on the machine. And that's how we will remediate this vulnerability enterprise wide. Okay. We could get rid of Zoom or we could also just do a start process. So another option that we could have run today is we could have done a start process. Uh, and then we're going to put the file, the path to it basically which is C colon program files, et cetera, whatever. So we'll just say path and then, well, actually I'll take it out because that may confuse somebody. So C colon uh, users can K E N D R app data roaming uh, zoom being, uh, I think it's lowercase and then zoom.exe. Okay, so we will do a start process for that. Um, and I don't know if we had any switches, we could do some more research, but that's essentially what we could do is we could use this command to um, open Zoom on a user's machine. Zoom typically when it opens, it automatically does an update. So you could just have a process that goes through and iterates through a customer's environment or your company's environment. If you're more like information system staff, or like, like kind of IT staff for, or cybersecurity staff for your own company or, or the company you work for. You could just launch Zoom, let Zoom do the update. That would essentially remediate the vulnerability too. But when we go back to Tenable, let's go ahead and zoom out at this point. When we go back to Tenable, I've essentially taken care of the Zoom vulnerability. Now let's check because you don't ever want to assume because these are all different vulnerabilities. And you can see from the output path that this one is also in that same location. Okay. All right. See, that's in the same location. Let's go up one. Let's take a look at this one. Plug in output. See, that one's in the same location. C colon Kendrick user roaming. Users Kendrick app data roaming zoom in zoom. D. Same thing for this one, I'm assuming. <coughs> but I'm also checking. And then finally, this one. So for the next video, we're going to be taking on one that's going to be a lot harder. And that's going to be remediating this this printer driver. So this is going to be one that's required. I like this one because it requires us to do some some actual research here to kind of understand this vulnerability and exactly what's needed to get rid of it. Okay. And so let's look at the chat. So all right, no updated chat messages. Okay, cool. So but anyway, this is interesting. This sport. I've already done some digging into this one. So for those of you who are watching the video, we're at 18 minutes. I hope you're liking this series. By the way, live stream, I'm gonna keep going after. We're just gonna wrap up the YouTube video. So if you will, please drop a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and tips and, and stuff related to cybersecurity and showing you exactly what I do on the job. I'm only teaching what I know. And as, I'm, as I know these things and as I'm teaching, I'm actually learning new things. So it gives me more to be able to give to the community. So thanks for watching. And please don't forget to drop a like on the video. Hit the like button and subscribe and if you're still watching right now i would like for you to put 1.0.0.0 in chat okay i'm sorry in the leave a message on the video at 1.0.0.0 that way i know you watch the whole thing so thanks for watching